What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, we are going to be talking about generics in TypeScript. Generics have a bad reputation as confusing. Um, a lot of times people don't understand like the actual use case. So in this video, I'm going to show you like a very real world scenario of mistakes that I first did when I first started programming and show you how generics can actually make your code more flexible with, like I said, a real example and ways that I screwed up code when I first started programming. So let's just imagine I've got my typical Pikachu or Pikachu is yelling again. So. Pikachu is yelling, we're passing in a value, and the way that we make Pikachu yell is we pass in Pikachu yell and we pass in a string. But because we're doing TypeScript, this could be, you could do this in just regular JavaScript, but since we're using TypeScript, we have to provide type checking. And we want type checking. That's uh, kind of, it, a lot of times people see it as a hassle that we we have to do this, but it's for you. It's for our own good. And if you're like me and you write bad code, you automatically default to TypeScript because you kind of don't trust yourself. It's kind of bad saying that, but it is kind of true. That's why I choose TypeScript. But next thing we know, we're we have to create a Pikachu has to yell in different. You know, Pikachu has to yell numbers. Pikachu has to yell objects. What like? Okay, so the first thing that maybe a lot of people would uh, try to do is they would just make another function. And I don't, like, that is bad code practice, but it's not the end of the world. So everything's going good and Pikachu yelled out number, but then you start realizing that you're starting to have to do this a lot. So you've got Pikachu yell number, and then next thing you know, you're adding another one, and it's Pikachu yell dot object, and... Next thing you know, you've got like a real problem on your hands and you don't want to be that person that's creating all those functions and pushing that code into the repository because that's going to make you look very stupid. So what do we do? Hmm, if only there was some way that we could pass in a type to our, our, function, or our function or our interface or our classes. That's like the whole entire idea of it is you, instead of passing in an actual parameter, in this case, uh, this is the parameter, what we're going to do is we're going to have angle brackets that are going to essentially pass in a type. And it's pr pretty simple. So instead of having Pikachu yell number, Pikachu yell object, we could just go in here, have these braces, and then watch this. Then we can have T here. Then we can have, and we can even return T, but you don't even have to. If you don't want to, you could turn return void. But in this case, we're going to return T. And we don't have to do the Pikachu yell dot number, Pikachu yell dot value, Pikachu dot yell, you know, object, whatever. We can just have the generic handle it for us. And we can go ahead and we can execute this code by just put it by providing our string. So if we want to go in and actually execute our code, we just do that right there. So let's go ahead in here and let's actually create our own um, our own function. Let's go ahead and actually do this. So we're going to have function Pokemon yell. So Pokemon yell, and then we're going to have T. Then here we're going to have value dot T. So T here, and then return value return the value that we actually passed in and this will work just fine if we execute this we can go ahead and execute this if we go const uh pokey we'll call it pokey yell so if we go pokemon.yell and we pass in our string and then we pass this value in right here and this is correct it goes ahead and it works also Whenever we get a return value, this is very, this is very, very important. Whenever we get a return value, we get all of those extension methods and it tells us exactly what those extension methods are once we actually return it. So we can actually get access to all this, you know, stuff down here. Okay, so let's start talking about generics for interfaces and generics for classes. So if you want to have a generic on an interface, relatively simple i think it's simpler than classes but what you want to do just go in here you apply your 
cur uh, brackets. Then you go down in here and do the same thing that you do, but just in interfaces. It's really not that complicated. So we're gonna have get to Pokemon. We're just gonna have a just real simple getter method. And if you don't know much about interfaces, I covered that in my previous video. So go down here. Then what we want to do is we want to have class and we're going to have our Pokemon class, have our curly braces again, implements. So we're gonna have implements. Then we're going to implement our generic interface. So we're gonna go generic interface. Then go in here, same thing. Have a property and value. Let's go ahead and make that, uh, put a null call lesson there so that it does not give us an error. It doesn't really matter that much in this example. Then we go in here, we're gonna have value. Uh, you can pass the T pretty much anywhere where type checking is allowed. So you can pass it in here, you can pass it up here, pass it up here, then go down here and same thing. So we're gonna go this dot value and that is going to initialize the value once our actual class is created. And if you look here, we've got a red squiggly line and this is because it's incorrectly, implement, incorrectly implementing this interface, which essentially means you need to implement this interface. And we could go ahead, implement the interface. I'm going to, I'm not going to use uh, arrows. I'm more comfortable with just doing regular uh, functions with just the brackets, but feel free to use whichever that you want to. It really doesn't matter. Then we go in here, we're going to return this dot value. Okay, looking awesome. So let's go ahead down here and let's test out our Pokemon. Yeah, let's actually have them in one place so that we can actually see them working. Then we are going to go here, go down here. We're going to go, let's just call it my Pokemon class my Pokemon class and we're going to new this thing up and also provide a nice little value at the end so that we can look at it. So we're gonna go, we're going to pass in a number in our brackets and it's actually a string, I'm sorry. So we're gonna have a string. Let me see here. Expected one argument, but got, oh, I got those two mixed up. So we're going to pass in uh, Pikachu, we're gonna say Pikachu, looking good. And I'm going to go ahead and fire up the debugger. So I'm gonna put a joker in here, <laughs> joker value. I love saying that word. Okay, we're gonna go in here and we're going to go ahead and launch this program. So let's go ahead and see what's inside of Pokeyell. Pokeyell and it gave us a string back, yay. And it also gave us all the type checking as well with it too. Okay, so we're gonna go to my Pokemon class and it's undefined because it hasn't been initialized yet, but watch what happens. Okay, so I forgot, I need to go, I had to go back and I need to add the value here. Uh, I'll make sure to add the equals.value because that was a mistake and it actually caused the program not to run correctly. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back, run it. Let's go back here. So let's go back and let's make sure that we are getting our actual value back. So we're gonna go here and our value is equal to Pikachu. You could pull that method, you could use that method here. Watch, you could do this. So we'll go const pokey value is equal to my Pokemon class and you can get that Pokemon and it will insert it into that pokey value. So let's go ahead and run it again just to double check to make sure. So we're gonna go down here and we got our Pokemon class. Let's get our Pokemon value. And the function pulls out that value from our class. We've all, we've got type checking as well too, and everything looks good. Anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to hit that like button, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching. <laughs>